All right, we are going to uh, transition here to Fred Lawler. I haven't quite seen him over on my little side grid. Fred, are you with but, us? Well, Jay, yes, but only audio, sorry. That's all right, fantastic. I am, I am ready to introduce you, sir, as soon as you're ready to be introduced. Well, um, I, I, I bet the showing, I don't know if that's the next speaker or if that's just uh, another, um, but anyway, um, go ahead. All right, Fred Lawler is a senior systems and test engineer at Raytheon El Segundo. He possesses significant OEM and SETA payload and avionics experience with an MSEE from GWU and a BSEE from Virginia Tech. He is current K-12 STEM outreach chair for AIAA LALV chapter and has conducted several resume and career workshops and runs an annual Mars Rover and Professional Society Expo. Please welcome Fred Lawler. Well, hi, thanks, um, Jay. And I guess Beth is also moderating, so we got an uh, honorable crew here. Uh, welcome, everyone. Happy. I, I'm running into people's lunch hour on the, on the Pacific time, so I hope uh, that's not too painful. Um, wanted to start with a quick, I assume everybody can hear me. Um, I wanted to start with a quick public service announcement because I've had the pleasure of working, uh, supporting uh, not only AIAA, but in COSI and IEEE, and I have an annual Mars Rover event. And I also have the pleasure of being able to text Ken. Um, and uh, just an FYI, um, we had over 100 sign-ins for today's uh, conference. I think that's a record for these Saturday activities. And um, we still have over 70 plus of those signed on. So unlike the uh, live events, uh, our no-show rate is a lot lower. I, that may or may not be surprising to people, but some interesting stats, hopefully uh, our Saturday uh, activities and venues will, uh, will continue. Um, yes, uh, I, uh, he went over my bio, uh, the only, and, and I'm certainly welcome to a lot of the um, Young professionals we're also targeting uh, and, and, or, and people that are interested in updating their resume while they're, shall we say, stuck at home. Um, on chart two, I just wanted to um, differentiate because there's different types of employers out there. OEM is original equipment manufacturer. Those, those would be some of the big companies that happen to be in the LA area locally. Uh, and I've worked for all those that are cited there. Uh, and CETAs are a system engineering and technology assessment type company that provides professional technical and acquisition smarts for the Space and Missile Center, for those of us that are in LA. They are a significant source of um, potential jobs. Uh, the SMC is also the uh, center for all these uh, Air Force space weather communications activities that go on throughout the world. That happens to be the acquisition arm for that is right here in El Segundo. So just wanted to mention all that. Um, also, uh, real quick on chart two, um, there are lots of uh, agencies out there that are doing uh, con they're pushing contract to hire CTH, which is mentioned on there. So in addition to direct jobs, there are also contract and CTH type of jobs up there. And uh, the newer people on the phone uh, need to be aware that there's more than one way to acquire a job. Um, the, in addition, at the bottom of chart two, the continued education, uh, and we've been talking in our chapter of maybe having a um, Saturday seminar with some of the vendors cited there that do some of the significant uh, software engineering tools that are mentioned there. Uh, MathWorks, uh, as many people know, does MATLAB, which is a very extensive uh, computer-aided engineering tool that a lot of uh, professions use. And then there's after companies have different ways of networking. Uh, Raytheon happens to have these TIGs, which talk about different types of technology within the company. The ERGs is where some of the extracurricular and the softball stuff comes from. And then Lunch and Learns, a lot of vendors will come on site and do, and particularly MATLAB, will do Lunch and Learns on various things. Chart four. Um, until one officially retires, however that's defined these days, uh, one should have a living resume, and obviously for those that are 
between jobs or have some time, uh, updating resume is a really good idea these days. Again, showing technical computer and soft skills that are identified down there. Um, I apologize, this is a little bit slanted to double E, but a lot of the tools are germane regardless of what your profession background is. Um, having lots of white space is real important, and I'm going to show front and back end copies of my resume to show you what I'm talking about. I've seen more than a few young professional college grad resumes where they're using almost illegible font 10 and squeezing everything on one page and having multiple things on the same line. That is not going to fly very far professionally. So um, please um, uh, allow larger fonts and white space. Um, reverse chronological is fairly standard. And the top half of the first page, as with newspapers, has to um, in, in motivate the reader to continue reading. So we're going to talk extensively about what goes in that top half of that first page. Chart five, please. Um, before we get into the format of the resume, I want to talk a little about the resume file. Um, should have an easy file name. Mine is example shown on there. And a key thing about the resume, in addition to having the name on the file, because HR and managers get lots and lots of resumes, is having a um, what they call configuration management tracker, CM tracker, and that is shown here with the little XX for a version number, because you might have more than one version of your resume targeting different areas, depending on what you're targeting your specialty or maybe different types of um, jobs are going after, and certainly keeping track of what version you've updated. Um, again, lots of white space. Um, you can employ the narrow margin in the layout part of Word to, a, a, to get that and get a little more real estate. And um, again, depending on your, uh, do you have a graduate degree and or a couple years of experience, and it doesn't all have to be professional, uh, you could certainly go to more than one page. Mine happens to be like five at the moment, but I've had more than a few jobs. On chart uh, six, please. Um, again, uh, resume features, we want it to be, lots of people are very tempted to put photos. I've seen some resumes with OCR stamps on them. HR is going to have a foggy study what to do with that stuff. These things get ingested into ATS, which is identified on there. And you need to have things on single lines so the ATS ingests information, particularly key things like contact information. Um, you want to use different bulleted action words. You're not, this is not an English assignment, so you're not doing uh, complete sentences. I recommend Arial 12, nice and readable and scannable. Um, depending on whether your experience or your education is the most important thing you're targeting for you, the job that you're going after, that should be under, again, the top half of the fold after the um, profile and skills stuff that we've talked about. And that, that will be the next thing on the resume going in uh, reverse chronological order. Page seven, please. Chart seven, please. <clears throat> the profile section is omitted in lots of resumes I've seen. Um, it's not an easy thing to write. Um, it's the most non-automatic thing to write because a lot of other stuff on the resume obviously is stuff that you've done. Um, and But it's the thing that it I, succinctly identifies you, what key things you bring to the company, and also the kind of job that you're targeting at that company. That all needs to be in the profile. It's right under your contact information. Again, I'm going to show you mine. Uh, it should not be more than a few lines. And it, again, it's going to target the, the requisition with the skills and experience that you have, and all that will be highly expanded further down in the resume. This uh, summary profile, whatever you want to call it at the top, is also essentially your 30-second elevator pitch, which will be highly employed when you are brave enough to attend a uh, career fair, which still exists, and the chance to see uh, real time, which are well, when they when the virus ends, they will resume. Um, there have some companies that have, have actually done some virtual job fairs, where you're in a chat room with a manager for a short period of time. And uh, again, the career fair, the uh, honor offline, is where the 30 second elevator pitch is very important and needs to be rehearsed. 
Chart eight, please. Um, the profile section needs to capture all the following, and again, it requires some consolidation to make sure you're going to capture that. One of the key things you ne one needs to show to HR and the manager is where you are in your career. Nearly graduated, entry level, or early career experience definitely need to be keywords in that profile. Some of the key technologies you've employed, I've listed a whole slew of them there. Um, IT is information technology, which is all the IT stuff that runs everything, including uh, today's Zoom stuff. Um, your latest formal degree needs to be spelled down there. Obviously, the degrees are shown there in normal chronological order. They build on each other. Uh, when you list them on the resume, I think only the last two um, degrees need to be cited. And I think it's also good to at least target, if you can, what industries you have experience in. Um, a lot of uh, industries are leveraging more commercial activities, particularly aerospace. Um, we're not doing as much fully ruggedized stuff. We're doing more COTS, which is an uh, acronym for commercial off-the-shelf stuff that can just be tweaked, obviously saving a lot of time and money. Um, various industries are down there. FFRDCs are federally funded research and development corporations. A key one that supports the SMC in El Segundo is the Aerospace Corporation, who is also hiring. Uh, they have um, offices nationwide, but they have a fairly significant office. They are the, the brains support for the SMC in El Segundo. Uh, next chart. The last part of the profile, uh, in part of the profile, if you have any managerial experience, lots of companies are looking for bringing on new seasoned uh, project leads, uh, section heads to uh, help with the larger staff that's being acquired. Um, most important, and we've had questions on this before, there needs to be some um, strong hint, which will be uh, clarified further on, as your citizenship status. Um, and any, having any security clearance in the U.S. clearly uh, does indicate the clearance and the citizenship in one fell swoop. Any certifications that you've had would be amplified further down, but might be nice to indicate, especially if you're going after some civil or um, structural um, type position where the PE, professional engineering, the state license is easily required. Um, somewhere in the profile, and this can be a little bit tricky, one needs to indicate or hint at, um, if it hasn't been hinted so far on the resume, uh, any diversity that you bring to the table because lots of companies are continually looking for and, and whether or not they're satisfying internal, external, uh, uh, equal opportunity quotas, diversity comments. So any comments, if it's not clear with what's else on the resume, that would be really nice to indicate that kind of stuff um, up front. Next chart, please. Just, and again, I'm going to show you an example of this, all this stuff uh, later on. Uh, under skills, uh, under profile, sorry, you want skills, and you're going to bulletize each of the following areas that I think indicate the breadth of what you're bringing to the table. And again, for those uh, Honorable Younger folks here, this is something you're going to expand as you get more uh, more experience. Um, cradle to rave, um, that indicates, that sub-bullet there sort of indicates when a, a, a customer wants something, they submit a proposal, or they submit a request for proposals. The company will respond with a pr uh, proposal, usually cost and schedule. You go through various design modeling, uh, INT, integration and test, and sell off of that product or service to the customer. Uh, PC-based tools, you should have a line for that. Um, Microsoft Office is fairly standard. You don't need to know a lot about it, but obviously some of the key tools, uh, the Excel, Word, and PowerPoint, um, are, are runs the world these days. The other tools that are shown there, some kind of uh, uh, technical writing um, skills. Uh, if you've done some test reports in your classes, your lab reports, um, hopefully you're going to um, – cite those further down in your resume, and also have a hard copy of those to bring to a career for, or more importantly, an interview. Um, 
a lot of company, larger companies use subcontractors or vendors to, to, in terms of what they call make versus buy decisions. So if you're dealing with a subcontractor or vendor, having kind of specs is about, about that are very important. Uh, an SOW is a statement of work, which is a key contractual document that tells between the customer and the contractor the schedule and cost of what's going to be happening. Uh, CDRLs or contract data requirements lists are various documents that come in during the course of the contract. Very important stuff. Again, for those that think they can breeze through their English classes, this is very important leveraging of your English paragraph structure kinds of stuff. Soft skills, customer briefings, presentations, um, things that you've done. Um, integrated product teams are a key part of most companies' um, uh, management uh, pl uh, plans these days. Um, chart 11, please. <clears throat> For each, uh, so we've done the profile, we've done the skills. Um, we are going to get into assuming that you have enough experience that we're playing the employer card. We want obviously the name and location of that employer. Uh, if they're a subsidiary of somebody, uh, that's certainly fine. Uh, if you've had more than a few jobs or they weren't very long term, I would highly emphasize making a parenthetical reference to being a contract job or being able to explain why it wasn't longer term. Um, Former employer, some idea of, you know, if you separated, um, there's mentions there as to why. The title that you had in the company, a little opening, two, one or two lines as to what the company does at the location that you worked at, and then the kind of things you did for that in support of that product or service at that company. And then, obviously, some of the stuff that you did with the bulletized uh, action words that are mentioned before. Uh, next chart, please. Uh, continuing the employer, um, key accomplishments, again, you're expanding on what you talked about earlier in the resume. I've, I've cited some action verbs there. There's lots more that you can find online. Um, in addition to the action verbs, it, it would be great, and this is not so easy for, so for those of us that are in the non-business world that can't talk about dollars saved and um, that kind of thing, but tracking, quantifying accomplishments where possible. I have mentioned some examples there, um, and obviously maybe having something to back that up if, if uh, questions come up. And if you've been at a company for a while, say more than a year or two, it would be great to show some progressively higher, more responsible titles in the resume underneath that employer. Obviously, um, demonstrating career advancement, which um, lots of companies are interested in grooming uh, more senior uh, employees. Um, past employers, you want to go back chronologically and hopefully being able to explain any significant gaps in employment. That happens with a lot of people these days. Um, but again, if they're recent relevant to the job or if they're in the same industry, that's certainly relevant. But the guideline is not going back more than 10 years generally. Uh, next chart, please. Again, if you're more playing your education uh, card than your um, skill uh, your employer card, the education will be next under skills. Again, I'll show you an example of that later. Um, again, your formal degrees in reverse chronological order. Um, if you if it's applicable and you have a GPA uh, above three, I would note that. Otherwise, I would not note that. Uh, in the degree, um, you want to, especially if your education is your major um, selling card going into the um, um, employment. Uh, we, we lost. We're doing, oh, yeah, okay, agenda check there. Um, if you hopefully had some ch choices to do your senior electives as you uh, get towards your senior year, those are very important and hopefully can be emphasized with regard to the type of job you're targeting in terms of some specialties. Again, digital signal processing is huge these days. That's what DSP stands for. Um, senior electives, some of your labs. Um, the T PC tools and the test equipment that you leveraged. Um, PLCs is programmable logic controllers. 
which runs a lot of the um, electromechanical stuff you see at the amusement parks, for example. Um, P-SPICE is a, a, a lower level simulation tool. Um, and any other outside activities, um, AIAA has had the uh, great pleasure of networking, for example, with several of the local universities, Cal State Long Beach, uh, Trojan Land and Bruin Land, for example. And uh, if you're aspiring to be a, uh, a chapter um, officer in those organizations, which come to our AIAA board meetings, by the way, um, that's awesome stuff, shows leadership, and it's certainly a very good thing to talk about on the resume. And also, if you get lunch with the boss during the, during, uh, the interview, uh, a great thing to sidebar discussion on. Next chart, please. Okay, here we have a humble example of my fairly recent, actually current resume. Um, and, and again, this is showing the top, this is above the fold on the top first page. Again, it was a size to a PowerPoint chart, so I'm sorry about that. Um, and again, uh, we will immediately notice the amount of white space on here. We will also immediately notice right at the top, the contact information is the most important thing because if HR or the manager is interested in talking to you, they're going to still pick up the phone and call you. So the contact information uh, is the most important thing. Notice it is one information per line. You're not doubling up at the top. ATS will not ingest that. And if you're applying on a, a job um, link on an applic online application, the, uh, the system will ingest that contact information and slap it in the application area if it's per line. If not, you're going to have to do it all yourself. Notice, for those of us that have more formal surnames or longer names or, if, shall we say, international names, having a short surname that you could at least put on your resume um, and reference parenthetically there is a very important thing because you don't want people um, in, a, in a phone screen or something stumbling over long multi-syllable names as you're going quickly going through a, a phone screen or a, an on-site. So that's, I'm showing an example of that there. The complete address is not necessary. A phone number that has a really good voicemail on it that definitely indicates, verifies to, to the caller that either the phone number or the name of the person they're calling so they can leave a message and know that they're leaving the correct message. Very important voicemail. No background music or anything like that. Um, obviously, email address is huge. Uh, if some people want to put a link to their LinkedIn profile uh, up there at the top on the contact, I have seen that done. That's not a bad idea, but that's the extent of the contact information. Notice um, below that I have the four-line profile that's uh, mentioned there. I've highlighted some of the um, experience, uh, the degree of experience, the different types of technologies, the advanced degree, the security clearance. Um, I happen to have cross life cycle. A lot of you younger folk may be coming into a company and may be getting over into the test area where you where the rubber beats the road, so to speak, and you're doing testing. Um, some of that may be uh, not so glamorous second shift stuff. Um, when you've got a satellite in the high bay, uh, you normally have round the clock three shift work. So, uh, But that's a great way to um, get hands-on experience with the product or service that your company is working on. The skills, as I mentioned, there are the four lines for the four different areas. We talked about that earlier. Um, my contact information is at the back of this set of charts. Uh, if you want any follow-up, um, Office 2010 is important. Um, I just want to make a quick reference. Doors is a, a now IBM tool that does a lot of and it's very well known in the uh, larger aerospace circles for requirements flow down. Very important uh, baselining what the customer wants in terms of generating specs to a, to a box that's a, subcon that's a subcontract from a whole satellite. A lab view is a very important uh, um, um, uh, lab automation tool, software tool brought to you by National Instruments, which has local offices, as does MathWorks. And LabVIEW runs a lot of the automated test equipment that you'll see in the racks, test racks in the lab. Um, and we've already talked about MATLAB coming from MathWorks. Um, the next line there, uh, ECP is a engineering change proposal, which is how 
a customer or a prime will illuminate, will um, inform formally a subcontractor how to change things. Um, we talked about our, our request for proposals, or request for quotes. Um, again, something referencing to team player. Um, if you've obviously worked on a senior project together, um, making reference to that further down in your resume, but making some reference to team player is certainly um, of interest. Notice I have a fair amount of experience and the degrees are a little while ago, so the experience is again the top of the fold. It, it shows the company there, uh, my title, um, some of the things that I've, that, that my part of Raytheon's not small, some of the things that I've done for my part of the company, and then some of the, um, the action verbs there, and then some of the things that I've done um, and quantifying some things in there. Um, real quick, uh, although I apologize for the non-double E's, CCAs are circuit card assemblies. Another term for that is PWBs, printed wiring boards. Those are key things that you find at least one of in every single phone that exists and every single PC tower that exists and most all electronics. So those components go into boards, go into boxes. So that level of integration is certainly something that's of interest. Special test equipment is STE, is uh, customized equipment that um, can be used to uh, prove and check out uh, satellites or boxes or whatever you're being delivered. Um, yeah, we can go on to the next page. I think I've done enough uh, with that page. Fred, I'm going to quick jump in here. And uh, Fred, I'm so sorry to interrupt. I need, do need to give you a 10-minute warning. So okay. You've got All right. Minutes, I'll, I'll uh, take that. Thanks. Thanks, Jay. Which will include q and for those um, that do not have the experience but are looking at the, um, at the uh, education experience, I have taught at ITT Tech, but, and I'm not bragging about that, but here's how you would show some of the uh, hardware, test equipment, software that you worked and highlighting some of your senior classes. If you did a senior project, I would definitely also parenthetically reference that, the title of it, a uh, little uh, brief of what it did, and then obviously have a, a hard copy handout of that as a souvenir during your interviews. Um, I'm not going to go over all the acronyms on there, but a fair amount of that is um, uh, VPN is virtual private networks, which uh, however everybody is working remotely these days, and IEEE 802.11 is the, um, uh, in the networking interface standard that makes VPNs work, just in case anybody's interested in knowing about that. IDE is Integrated Development Environment, which is the hardware software environment that you design new software um, hardware uh, equipment. Next page. What's on my next page? Um, real quick, um, formal education and continuing education. I've just summarized that. Most all companies have lunch and learns, other things. Vendors do some of the things. I've certainly indicated lots of that here. Um, Model-based system engineering is getting huge in a lot of areas, um, and that's mentioned down there. Um, ISR is uh, intelligence, surveillance, and uh, reconnaissance. That is a huge area that has a lot of needs for classified, highly classified stuff, but ISR is how we found Ben Laden several years ago. Next chart. The bottom of the resume, this is the, 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 the tail of it, um, again, um, this is kind of a catch-all area where you can list a bunch of miscellaneous stuff. Uh, test equipment, again, for those who have had any hands-on experience, that's still real important. Um, and uh, I've mentioned some of that on here. Uh, publications, I'm stretching a little bit, but if you've done any formal publications for advanced degrees, thesis, awesome stuff put on here. Other test reports you've written, vendor stuff, all, uh, all uh, important stuff to put on there. Uh, ICD, real quick, is a um, interface control document, is a very key spec to show how different parts of a system uh, interface with each other. Um, hopefully everybody knows what STEM is. This is a multi-STEM outreach event today. Um, again, I do a, a Mars rover thing I'm going to talk about, what I do about that. Um, INCOSI is the International Council of System Engineering, also very active in this area, in this LA area. They're also nationwide, and they do a lot of the system engineering stuff that uses that doors and MB, MBSE stuff I talked about, if that's of interest. If you don't know what the system does, 
the, the black boxes further down aren't going to work at all. Um, next page. Um, this is uh, real quick in the couple minutes I have left. Um, when you finish your uh, resume, if you want me to look at it, my contact information is on the last page. I'm happy to do that. Uh, obviously, there's various job boards there that are pretty venerable that people go to. Um, job aggregators, I would highly encourage Indeed is the one I'm going to plug, and you could spend half a day getting the job agents from Indeed because you can set up a job agent on Indeed and Glassdoor and, and others um, that allow you to target uh, particular job titles and particular locations um, and types of jobs and have them bundle that in a, 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 a job um, email that they will send you with actual hyperlinks to the, where you can apply to the company job site to the job. And you can also get an idea of what kind of jobs are out there if you're interested in looking for a particular job and or in a particular area. Obviously, LinkedIn is huge with regard to networking with various people and professions. If you want to find out about a company and uh, get a um, more premium level in LinkedIn with some of the um, in, um, important officers of the company, it's certainly a good way to do that. And again, if you, you should have at least um, your resume and a photo and some interesting uh, tidbits on your LinkedIn profile because lots of people use that these days. Um, next chart. I'm close to the end here. I, uh, other people spend a lot of time talking about interviewing. Uh, just to wrap this up, um, obviously pre-interview researching the company, reviewing the requisition. The rec is, is a short name for the requisition, the job that you're going after, fairly standard dress code. Guys, yes, a, a dress shirt and a tie is minimum required, and, and ladies, a blouse and dress. Um, full, full blown coat and tie is not necessarily required, but not a bad idea. Um, again, I've referenced a couple times about the portfolio, having sample reports, lab stuff that you've done, stuff you did in grad school, undergrad school. Um, being able to ask some questions during interview to, to reflect the fact that you've understood what the interviewers have said and uh, bounce some stuff back that I have some uh, sample questions there. Um, the uh, trying to get, uh, and oh, by the way, a lot of uh, interviews these days, well, in the current virus campaign, uh, their phone screens, a lot of them also can be video conferences and a lot of them will have more than one uh, interviewer involved. So it's gonna be a little more challenging, hopefully having some note paper to take notes and trying to keep um, on, on track and focus to who's asking what questions uh, is also very important. Um, before you wrap up, whether you get the handshake, hopefully handshakes are not totally dead even after virus, uh, and um, making sure that you recap that, that you want the job and also thank them for their time and an important question of what is the next step. Normally a phone screen will uh, uh, elicit an on-site uh, interview, which um, may take a while to resume. And then if you get the business cards, writing a quick little email thank you note is also a very nice thing with the resume um, for a couple reasons. Uh, first of all, you want to uh, reinstill the, the, to the interviewer that you um, still want the job. You also want to send a soft copy of resume along with that thank you note if you can because the um, manager might want to forward that to some part of the parts of his team for a, because usually there's um, more than one phone screen involved these days. Um, real quick, next chart, I'm almost done. And again, these are, Ken will post these on site. If any of you are interested in the things to do while you're stuck at home, um, I have two uh, examples of that, uh, two charts of that here. Um, when we get back and running, um, we, the, some of the local um, universities do some great things, dinner with industry, invited speaker talks um, uh, that are shown there. Uh, when we get back to normal, the, uh, a lot of societies do have dinner meetings where they bring in some of those key speakers. Um, we have, and they're continuing, young professional mixers, and we're going to try, AAA is going to try and have one here in another couple weeks, kind of a mixer happy hour kind of thing. Um, I am still hoping to have my ninth annual Mars Rover Professional Society uh, Expo 
uh, targeted for mid-September at Northrop's S Cafe. Um, a great opportunity for the society, the local society, to get together, um, solicit members, volunteers, um, ways to help out. Uh, societies always could use a lot of help in a lot of areas. You don't have to be a rocket guy to help with AIAA, for example, because I'm not. Um, and uh, also, this is a, a huge local STEM outreach event. Um, and uh, the Space and Missile Center has a very good heritage center, which is also um, involved in this local uh, aerospace museum. Uh, next page, as I'm one minute left, um, chart 21, thank you. Um, Raytheon, through their employee outreach, was doing some uh, local tutoring, uh, again, uh, STEM outreach stuff, mostly in math, um, at, the sh at the school shown there. I'm sure there's other schools that would love to have that. The uh, Heritage Center at SMC does high school tours and talks, and again, provides a wonderful straw rocket and other things at the Mars Expo. Uh, Fuzz is the, uh, happens to be the Raytheon contact for the annual um, robotics which is actually junior high and high school. First is a nationwide organization, requires um, uh, a fair amount of money for the kits that they have, but they could use help, both technical and managerial help in, in working with some of their teams. Um, there are two mentorship activities shown there with contact names for them. If you're interested in doing some other STEM Advantage stuff, just mentoring some other kids that um, obviously are, are uh, from disadvantaged environments, particularly in the STEM area that could, could use some help, they would be very happy to hear from you. And I think my last chart is just my contact information. And uh, I think I'm pretty much right up on time. If there's any quick, quick questions, Jay, I'll take some. Otherwise, they can contact me. Um, yes, we would, I would love to get in this question from Braden Toth. I don't know if you can see this, but I'll read it to you, Fred. It says, sure, as sir, a high thank school you. Yes, as a high schooler going into college in the fall who has a choice between mechanical engineering with an aerospace minor or straight aerospace engineering, what would you recommend? Oh boy. Um, well, I see, you know, that's a really tough uh, question. It definitely, a, a mechanical minor is, 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 is excellent uh, in terms of diversity, is highly um, of interest. Um, I, I have more than a few aerospace people that I know at Raytheon, and some of them are doing electronic stuff. So um, I, I, the, the mechanical minor is definitely yeah, a good idea. I'll leave it at that. All right, and with that, we are out of time. But Fred, thank you so much for your presentation today. Thanks, Jay, and um, uh, thank you all. Um, again, my contact information, Ken's going to post the charts. Um, hope everybody enjoyed that. Enjoy the rest of the afternoon.